Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Today's warehouse needs to keep inventory moving smoothly and quickly. Meet these challenges with on-demand warehouse labeling from Brother Mobile Solutions. Our mobile and industrial printers will help optimize your operations to achieve the speed, reliability, and durability your warehouse needs. With easy integration for existing warehouse technology, convenient portability, and upfront affordability, Brother Mobile Solutions is at your side when it comes to warehouse labeling. Try one for free today by visiting brothermobilesolutions.com slash newwarehouse or click the link in the show notes. That's it's brothermobilesolutions.com slash new warehouse to try one for free today. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. Today, we have a very exciting episode. We have two guests. We're going to have Steve Denton, CEO at where to go back on the podcast. And we're also going to talk to Sarah Mader, who is the founder and CEO of Palouse Brands. And we're going to talk to them about their, their relationship, but we're going to hear a little bit about uh, Palouse Brands story first and, and how they kind of went through some really explosive growth and, and how they were able to, to tackle that and then how where to go kind of came into the picture to to help them address that. So first, let's introduce Sarah Mader here. So Sarah, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Definitely happy to get you on. Definitely happy to to hear your perspective on this. Uh, oftentimes, we talk to the the solution provider on this show, so it's always good to talk to the the brand or the the shipper in the, this sense uh, as well. So, so why don't you tell us first a little bit about uh, Palouse Brand and, and what it is that you all do for those that are not familiar? Sure. So, Palouse Brand is a farm to fork food company. Okay. My husband and in-laws have been farming. We're the fifth generation of farmers. It dates oh, back wow. over 125 years. And in 2009, we decided to go direct to consumer with our Palouse brand products. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the foods will give you a lot of information and a lot of details on what field did we grow it in. We're primarily a woman-led packaging facility. So what woman actually sewed the bag of food? We're all eco-friendly, sustainable products and sustainable farming practices. So we ship food all over the world. But for the purposes of today, we're going to talk about the e-commerce part of our, our business, which is our small bag retail pack line. Interesting. So I, I'm curious about that because I, I live in New Jersey here and there's a lot of farms around me, a lot of farm stands and, and things of that nature. So, I mean, how do you take kind of the traditional farmers market farm stand on the, the side of the road kind of thing and, and kind of make it an e-commerce brand? Out of, how, do you, how did you kind of decide to go in that direction and, and how did you kind of put things in place to, to make that happen initially? You know, I come from a tech background, and when we started to decide to have a family, um, we realized that we had, in 2001, my father-in-law had bought a uh, processing facility in Palouse, Washington, which is about 11 miles north of our farming headquarters in Pullman, Washington. Mm -hmm. And the foods that we grow are dry. So think chickpeas, lentils, green split peas that taste like your grandma's split pea soup. So not today's hot new varieties. It is like a more traditional type of pea. And then we do all sorts of wheat berries. So people really come to us to that want to go with a more holistic eating approach that want to know where their food came from. Mm. And that's how we launched. So we launched an eco-friendly fabrics. We wanted to make sure that everything we do is sustainable for the next generation and truly provide that 
you know, far, farm to fork experience for families. And so we decided to do that through e-commerce and launched on Amazon in 2009. Mm. Very interesting. And I, and I think very smart too, to go to that kind of a fully sustainable approach because, you know, obviously the, the consumers that are concerned about the, the, where the food is coming from. And like you said, who's packing and all these things are, are concerned about all that packaging things as well too. So launched in, in 2009, you said on Amazon. And then at, at a point I saw that you guys had kind of some, some overnight explosive growth of about 4,000%, I think is what I saw. So Tell us a little bit about what happened there, because that's pretty wild. It's happened a couple different times Mm. in the last few years. So global events for us actually will trigger food situations in the United States. So COVID was one where everybody wouldn't leave their homes, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted to get food delivered right to their house. And they wanted pantry sustainable foods that can last them a while. Recent world events, um, when there's unsettled, unsettled, situations in the in the around the globe that will also trigger people looking to fulfill their pantries as well and so you can literally go to bed and be out of stock at all of your fulfillment centers the next day mm. and so we've had to go into uh, it's not it's like the best crisis mode you could ever find right like it's we're in severe shortage everything's gone how do we pivot like today Mm -hmm. to make sure that we can take care of people's orders and that everybody can continue purchasing from us. And so we've done it a a few different times. The last time was probably the most fun and where we actually changed the path for our company moving forward through our last massive explosive growth event. And so that's kind of how we met where to go and started our partnership there. Mm. It's very interesting. And I, I'm curious on the uh, side of, because it's, it's food, right, that you're, you're growing from a farm perspective. I mean, when you see see that spike in, in growth, you know, for like a, a traditional product, right, we would maybe just call our manufacturer and say like, hey, we, we need to make more, right? But you need to, to grow more. So, yeah. I, I mean, how do you kind of leverage that capacity from a, a farm perspective to be able to, to make sure you're still... I guess, yielding enough crop to, to deal with growth points like that? that? That's a really great question. I was talking about that um, just yesterday. And we do our, it becomes challenging when you have growth like that. Yeah. Luckily, we have lots of storage facilities and we can store large volumes of amount of food because it is dry mm. food. It's not fresh. It's not yeah. going to spoil in the bin. And so part of our process is that we clean that in small batches. And that's how we can actually field trace and preserve and track that that food, that chickpea was grown on this farm just down the road from the processing facility. Mm. And so when we process in small batches, you know, the quickest we can get our trucks into the facilities, our storage facilities and bringing it in so the product can be cleaned, that's the best way to do it. We're also sitting on lots of square footage. Mm. So when we start going through cycles like that, we can actually clean larger lots. We can kind of stack them on the floor and pull whatever the hot item is. I mean, that part of that goes into it. Last year, it was wheat, right? Everybody okay. wanted the wheat berry, the, the wheat crisis last year. And a lot of people want this year are wanting to be able to figure out the homesteading life and be able to mill their own wheat to make their own bread. And so it's really fun to ride the waves of what the consumers are looking for. And we're fortunate enough that we can I don't want to say stockpile because we clean yeah. it out every year. Mm-hmm. When you when you buy a bag of food from us, it is the most current food that we've grown. Mm-hmm. And so now is like the best time to buy because we just brought all of our crop in at the, in September. It's all just in all of the old's gone and we're pushing all new out the door. Oh, okay. All right. A little insider tip there for those that are listening <laughs> and interested. So, so very interesting. And I think that that's so, such an interesting world as well to, to figure out how do you take, you know, what could be like traditionally a local sale and now bring into this, this national scale from a fulfillment perspective. So I think that's kind of where, where to go also comes into play here. So, so I, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the relationship there, but I guess for, for people that are are not familiar first, Steve, why don't you, why don't you give us some brief overview of, of where to go and, and what it is that you guys do? Sure. And Kevin, it's great to see you again. You too. Um, and thank, thanks for having Sarah and I on. I think, I think you can listen to Sarah's story. It's fascinating and, and what, what they're doing there. So real quick on where to go, we'll get back to the start of the show here. Um, but real quick on, on where to go, you know, we have a shared purpose here. And what I love about our shared purpose is our shared purpose here at where to go 
is to simplify this, the end to end supply chain to help merchants of all sizes compete and grow. And I feel, and, and we do business with folks like Sarah and her team all the time as mm-hmm. they have this exponential growth. They take advantage of our model and, and we help them simplify that supply chain and we help them compete and grow. And that's our, that's our purpose, right? That's what we do. Mm-hmm. And to tell you a little bit about how we do it, look, we are 5PL, right? So we've evolved and, and you know, we're a market leading 5PL. We're a five year old company. And the best way to think about us, Kevin, is how you would think about Uber or Airbnb, but mm-hmm. instead of connecting people who need rides with cars or people who want to stay in places or people who want to rent places. We connect great merchants like Sarah and the folks over at Palouse Brands with really good, competent, network-wide supply. And we do it on one common technology platform. So when someone like Sarah works with us, we we integrate into her demand generation. So let's say it's a Shopify cart. We, we have a a DOMS or a distributed order management system built into that. And we have full visibility and inventory. We route those orders to the warehouse that's closest to the consumer. That's typically the rule that that exists. And then our SLA is in by two out same day. And we do it for folks like Sarah on an on-demand basis. So she pays for what she uses. She's not tied up in three-year contracts. Mm. You know, we got to earn it every day. and, And we have the network capacity to flex up. As she scales at four thousand percent growth, or right, if 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 they are out of out of goods, uh, or not out of goods, but but you know maybe it's 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 a down cycle on mm-hmm. on seasonality, and 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 it's there for her to support her growth, and it's technology led, and we partner with great carriers, and we do it all in a fully loaded price. And the other thing I would say that I'm really proud of the work we do is we want to connect with our clients where they want to be connected. So Mm. whether they're in multiple marketplaces, which have different complex sets of rules, or they move into retail compliance because they grow and now they're selling to retailers and you got to be retail compliant, or you just need simple D to C, you know, our network gives you the flexibility to do that and do it in a way that that works for you as as a business. So that's what I love about what we're doing. It's hard to do. It's technology led, but we get to work with great entrepreneurs like Sarah and her family and her team. And, and, and the last thing I'll say about it, and I know this resonated with Sarah because of the sustainable model that they have, mm-hmm. is our network is green. So like we, uh, we don't compromise on that. Like yeah. when you work in where to go, we, we know the carbon offsets in the transportation business are high. Mm-hmm. We buy and offset the carbon credits for every single thing that moves through our network. And it's built into our pricing. We eat it in the margin, but we think it's really important to be able to offer clients like Sarah not who just are in a sustainable business, but also a sustainable supply chain. So I could talk all day about what we do, um, <laughs> but uh, there, 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 there's, I don't know. That's not the elevator pitch, Kevin. I would say yeah. that's kind of like the, well, if you're in a high rise in a slow elevator, yeah. you, you, you got the 84 <laughs> level pitch there, but that's who we are and what we do. And, and yeah, I'd be, and we're a hundred percent owned by UPS. So we are yeah. a UPS subsidiary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. And I, I think it's great that you're able to offer that, that flexibility, especially for, for brands like Palouse who, you know, need that flexibility and are going through these, these gross spikes and, you know, trying to figure out like, how do we bring this to the market and, and how do we deliver in the best way? And also giving them kind of that comprehensive inventory distribution as well uh, and getting through multiple different marketplaces as you mentioned so so Sarah I'm curious from from your perspective like when you started to experience this growth for I guess the the first time because it sounds like you have multiple spikes but you know for the first time and you start to look and see like mm, like you know we, we need to figure out a solution to be able to to handle this demand I mean what was kind of the the thought process and and what what were you looking for and how did you end up landing with where to go Sure. So you walk in and your inventories are at zero and you are still selling goods. And so that's what we wake up to when we Mm. go through these crises. So at that point, you know, you can find Palouse brand on the big channels like Amazon and Walmart, but on um, five more channels as well. So Mm. we've, we've gone to that omni channel approach and the technology inside the company supports it with partnering with where to go. And so the first thing you do is you stop sending inventory inbound to Amazon fulfillment 
warehouses because all you can do is literally just service customer orders. And so yeah. I laugh because at one point during our COVID run, Amazon had a little metric. It's not there anymore, but it said, how many orders has Amazon filled in the last you know, 24 hours? And how many have you fulfilled by merchant, which is their terminology? Mm. And we broke the counter. It was stuck at 7,000 orders my team put out of our warehouse in one day. Wow. So we believe that if you place an order, it should ship same day. We have a mm. two o'clock cutoff. Everything ships Monday through Saturday. That prime badge is super important to us. We were an early adopter of SFP. Mm. And so when we started looking at partnerships, we, we had a, a partial breakup with the old delivery company. Mm -hmm. And I called UPS, I called my local rep and I said, hi, I know you've been talking to my team. We haven't met and I'm giving you 24 hour notice. I'm going to bury you tomorrow. And that was the first line of my call. And he mm -hmm. said, I'll be right up. And he drove an hour and a half to come see us. And I made good on my promise. We, we we buried them <laughs> and we buried them locally for months and months. I mean, mm. still today, I have a trailer parked next to my building and we fill that trailer. It heads out. We've tried to work with, you know, the U, our UPS partner to have fewer touches on the packages. You know, it helps all of us. And so we've worked through some pretty cool uh, challenges with them. And at one point during our crisis, he said, I have something that can help you. And when you get to a spot where you can breathe, I want you to call me. And about four weeks later, I said, okay, talk to me. I'm burning out. And he said, okay, I'll be there. And he suggested this idea of where to go. And what where to go did is they came to us at a critical point where then we were able to flip our prime badge back on. Mm. But to give you like just a brief history, every time we've gone through explosive growth, we've had to shut off all channels except for Amazon because we didn't have a good inventory uh. management solution. And so, you know, if I only have 500 units, where do I put them? Where do those sales come from? And Amazon's a beast online. It's a big marketplace. And yeah. so I didn't want to turn that one off. And so we did all of our, but, but it impacts margin. Let's be honest. Like you want to keep all your channels, you know, chugging along when right. you go through growth. And so there, we would go months without having any channel other than Amazon turned on. Hmm. And through the network and partnership with where to go and UPS, we've back, actually, we're, we're positioned moving forward to be in the best situation possible the next time we walk in and inventory's at zero. We've changed um, our method because now when I shipped to the warehouses, I can ship full truckloads. And we weren't able to do that before. And I needed the ability to ship a, a truck a day. Mm. And now we can ship full truckloads. Our goods check in within a 48-hour SLA. And so they, they can be from Washington State to the East Coast, checked in and on the shelf in seven days. Mm -hmm. And that's our primary focus is getting those warehouses the furthest away from us mm -hmm. while keeping the customer promise. We want to stop those first. And so internally, you know, we have battle plans of how we're going to execute the next, you know, explosive growth season. And, you know, we're, we're, we're growing a little bit right now. I wouldn't say you walk into zero inventory, but yeah. we're monitoring it hourly and daily currently. All right. Very nice. And I think it's such a, such a great thing to, to hear about, you know, the, the success you've had first off. And I mean, congratulations to you and your, your family on, on that. But, you know, I think additionally, like to be able to now, you know, see that, that explosive growth and, and be able to, to find partners and, and like where to go to be able to, to help you accomplish that and, and continue to succeed beyond that. And now you mentioned that, you know, the omni-channel focus in there. And, I, and I'm curious from your perspective, as a brand owner, you know, why do you think it's so important for brands to to focus on making sure that they can create that omni-channel um, presence? Yeah, I think it's brand awareness, right? It's what, what do they say? Like a customer has to see your brand seven times before they buy. Mm. That's that's great for your everyday situations, but when you go through crisis, they're buying as fast as they can. Yeah. And so it's super important. Everybody has their favorite channel to buy from, right? Someone that supported them well. 
And I want to make sure that the customer experience is the same for our brand on every channel as it is for a prime customer. Mm. And our partnership with where to go allows that to happen. They get the the goods in 48 hours. As long as my team keeps those warehouses stocked, they're getting stuff super fast. And like at our heart, quality and customer success is, is the, where I thrive. You know, when I started building this brand and business, I thought about the brand I love most. And there's one brand and you can't argue me down after 20 years of being a loyal <laughs> It's Nordstrom and it's their customer service. And I said, you know what? I don't care that we're a family business. We're going to have the same type of customer experience that Nordstrom delivers to their customers. And they're my model. Mm. So I, I, I wanted to make sure that our customers are taken care of first. And so it's really fun to hear those customer stories. We had a review pop up. Our reviews, they cycle through. We don't even check them. They just come through the website. And mm. I happened to be on the website and, and a mom was saying, I told my family at dinner that I ordered Palouse brand today. The next dinner, we were laughing because we already had our order. Oh, wow. That's very so nice. um, it's really fun when the customers recognize how hard you're working for them as well. Yeah, that plays right into your tagline, right? Imagine the conversations that families are having on the, uh, uh, about our products at their dinner table. I know I butchered that, but, um, <laughs> but, but it's, it's, it, what is it for everybody? You, I love it. I just butchered it. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's imagine <laughs> the conversations people are having about our products. And yeah. we did that as an internal mission statement so that at the heart of everything we do from our truck drivers, the farmers, right, to the truck drivers, to, you know, we have amazing people that process and clean this food when they're looking at it and they're inspecting it for quality. Are we giving our best? And so it was actually an internal driver that sometimes we put out there through some of our marketing and, and everything, but it's really was meant internally for us to really focus our people and our team to know what they were getting behind and what our expectation was. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You know, you know, Kevin, just, just a couple of stats on that marketplace thing, because sure. Sarah brought up some great points there. So I'll drop some network factoids on you, right? So yeah, let's, hear um, it. let's hear it. Yeah. So, so marketplaces, right? So we obviously marketplaces are like that new marketing muscle, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you think about it, you could, you could argue right now, marketplaces are the new search engine for commerce, mm -hmm. just from the statistics of all the marketplace research out there. So you know, we took a look at this 2023 e-commerce marketplace report. And I think a couple of things there. One, a third of the consumers do more than 50% of their shopping on online marketplaces. Mm. Right. So you think about that audience and 89% of those consumers are comparison shopping on two or more marketplaces before they make a purchase decision. So nobody is, nobody's really single source to a marketplace, right? Yeah. We it's, it's accessible. So to, to Sarah's point, it's about brand awareness, right? And it's about being in the consideration set and meeting your customers where they want to be met. But that is an exploratory, these marketplaces are exploratory vehicles for these consumers now. Mm. But the other thing is, <clears throat> To Sarah's point, 63% of the consumers would rather purchase directly from a brand's e-commerce website if price and shipping options are comparable to marketplace listings. And where a lot of merchants that are coming on board and growing fall down or struggle is offering that consistent experience across channels. Mm -hmm. And in, in Sarah's world, one of the things I'm proud of, like, you know, she SFP is so important for them, right? She can be in the where to go network and maintain that SFP badge because we meet those criteria, right? Mm. You got to work on Saturdays, uh, in by two out same day. Uh, over 60% of the goods have to be uh, available within a one day footprint on search terms versus mm. actually shipping speed. And 
what I love about our relationship and, and the way we go about it is Sarah doesn't have to have a different experience mm. for her Amazon customers versus her Walmart customers versus any other marketplace customer versus direct to her website consumers. Mm. They all get the same consistent shipping and fulfillment experience. And, and, and that's what's ultimately going to allow more direct navigation to her website yeah. for those conversions. And, and candidly, that's where your better margins are. And you get better data about your consumers. You get second bites of the apple. Like it just, you have to have that consistent experience across your channels or else you're just going to be single sourced and it's, it's not going to throw off the longevity that you want. So that's one of the things that like she, Sarah talked about some great things there that they do. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to add some context around like, what do those numbers really mean in terms of like conversion metrics and the percentage of customers that do that? And I think the key takeaway is it shouldn't matter. I mean, you're a consumer. Are you an Amazon consumer or are you just a consumer? Right. Yeah. And, 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 and we're all multi-channel consumers and we want to be met where we want to be met and we want a personalized experience and 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 part of the relationship on the fulfillment side which is part of the commerce ecosystem is it's got to be consistent and right. it's got to be the same uh, regardless of channel um and um so steve steve yeah. to your point though we're seeing like our dot com is growing like crazy and mm -hmm. it's now a much larger part of our business than it was even 5 years ago and so i think that speaks to everything you just said along with being able to provide that, you know, prime like experience on my own website. Mm. But it it's just grow. I mean, it's probably our fastest grower currently sure. um, really? is yeah. our .com. Yep. Yep. And 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 your lowest cost per acquisition, your earned media, your better data, like it, it yep. it's always the best channel, right? But you got to play in other marketplaces to to grow that and consistency helps you get there. So yeah, it's anyway. a heartbreaker when you walk in and shut off your dot com. It's the heartbreaker. Oh. It makes it harder on your company. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. That's why that's why that technology is so important because you got to be able to fence your inventory based on channel. Right. If you only have a thousand units, you got to fence that inventory and say, look, I, I always got to have 250 of these units for my direct mm. navigation consumers. And I'm going to make a hundred available on this channel and a hundred available on this channel. And it sounds easy. But when orders are dropping, yeah. you got to have a sophisticated fulfillment technology in order to be able to say, you know what, like it's not just FIFO, right? It mm -hmm. is well beyond FIFO. It is it is fenced inventory. And what I love about it is companies like Palouse Brands had an opportunity to to get that at an enterprise grade. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so awesome. yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess tell us a little bit, Steve. I mean, about that from your your tech stack perspective. I mean, because I, I mean, that was one of the things that Sarah mentioned early on in our conversation was that you know initially they're trying to figure that out and it was not much inventory management system in in play there. So I guess Steve, tell us a little bit about from like the where to go perspective, like how your tech enables brands like Palouse to to now come onto the platform and, and be able to understand how can they section off or, or distribute that inventory so that it's it's getting to the right channels and I guess evenly getting distributed or preferably to whichever channel uh, is is the best for the best results. Sure. So one of the things I love about our technology is it's really flexible. And one of the mm -hmm. things I hate about our technology is it's really flexible, right? Because because <laughs> it because it creates it creates a lot of use cases yeah. um, uh, for folks. Um, but. Uh, it's like, it's like Salesforce, right? I love Salesforce, mm. but I hate it all at the same time. I mean, I love it, but it's like so flexible <laughs> that it creates all these snowflakes. But, you know, like, like look, they, they had technology, right? So I think you got to mm. start from the fact that what stack does your customer have? Mm. And, and, and let's optimize their stack, right? Whether it's catalog stack or a demand generation stack, like they've invested in their stack. So, you know, I think the key to our business is let's meet you on the, on the technology platforms where you want to be met. And then let's help solve those problems. So the key to it, Kevin and, and Sarah, will, she'll probably laugh about this. Inventory visibility is one thing, right? It's mm -hmm. table stakes. So the ability yeah. to see inventory in multiple warehouses is, is critical. But the other part of it is demand forecasting. Because mm. you cannot have good inventory management if you don't have good demand planning and demand forecasting. Right. And in the Palouse world, because they could wake up to world events that change like they could be in a peak tomorrow, 
for mm. an unknown reason, that's really hard. So you solve a lot of it with with technology integration. So you know we're open API, webhook. So you know we connect with all the platforms that anybody mm. would want to, and if and then we certainly have augmentation tools that sit in there. But the other part of it is not just the technology piece; it's the service piece. Like mm. Sarah's got an account manager. We've been out to the farm. Like we've been out there to the farm. It's fantastic. I encourage you to go. I don't know if she'll have you, but it's really awesome. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful part of this country. But my team's been out to the farm. We have regular calls. And, and a big part of that is, is working through the demand planning as best you can, because that's going to help you. Like I'll, I'll give you a, I was, I was talking to someone the other day and they said, Steve, what's, what's one piece of advice that you would give any merchant working with a fulfillment partner? I said, mm. tell your fulfillment partner when you're going to have a sale. Like yeah. don't have a warehouse sale and not tell the warehouse because that's going to be a big <laughs> problem. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. because oh, and, <laughs> Steve, Steve, yeah. we just dropped yeah. our sale a couple hours ago and I forgot to right. tell my account rep. That's so. terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. Right. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing. We've got an expansive network right now and we can yeah. fill it, but, but the, those communications and, and we always solve things as much with tech as we can, but you also, mm. you have to have the humans involved with the relationship, like, are you doing a big Google AdWords spend? Are you dropping a big email? Are you gonna be discounting products? What's your promotional calendar look like? You know, what does that look like moving forward? And then you start to advise on fencing of, mm. of inventory based on that. So it's as much a tech play, Kevin, as much as it is a human, mm. uh, working with the clients and their marketing departments and their demand gen, because you got to get that right. But yeah, the stack was really, let's meet you where you want to be met. And then places where you got gaps, yeah. you know, we'll fill that out. And then we work with them on the rules. Like, what rules do you want? Like, we've got some clients, like they might do a big deal on uh, Good Morning America be the brand of the day, or, mm. or they might have a big PBC sale going on. And, you got to make rapid adjustments to that. And the technology allows you to do that and have different expiry dates by channel. Cause you know, different channels have different expiry dates based yeah. on their rules and mm -hmm. things like that. So there's a, like I said, I love our technology cause it's really flexible. And then there's things about our technology because it's really flexible, creates a lot of snowflakes that you got to stay on top <laughs> of, but you know what? It's what enables companies to compete and grow. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that that flexibility to, uh, you know, ripples all the way down to the the customer as well because that's ultimately what what they want as well as we talked about you know being able to purchase from different channels and in different ways i, I think that the flexibility we have to to embrace it and, and be able to to do that for the consumer ultimately so sure. so yeah. sarah i'm curious steve kind of mentioned in there what, what makes a good partnership from the, the brand perspective you know that communication on uh, sales and, and demand and, and things like that but I, i'm curious from your perspective sarah if you were to give advice to uh, another brand on, you know, when they're looking for a fulfillment partner, what, what is the, the best advice you could give them to, to set themselves up for a success and a successful partnership? Yeah. Well, you're talking to a techie, right? Like I came yeah. from tech. I lived in <laughs> Silicon Valley. We helped write a lot of software and I worked with lots of clients that uh, it's an, under the Oracle umbrella today, right? Mm, so okay. I'm a salesperson's worst nightmare when a salesperson <laughs> calls me because I know I've done the back end. I, I've done my back end homework and I won't take a call without a sales engineer on the phone mm. and I don't need to deck. So when I started this process and started looking at the, the technology, it was, what are your web hooks like? What do you do here? What do you do there? What do we need to put in place? And we made changes to our tech stack and they mm. were the best decisions we've ever made that are allowing us to run as efficient as we are today. So yes, we look like a family food company online and we absolutely are, mm -hmm. but my heart is in the tech piece. And so I am like super proud because I change quick, mm -hmm. right? Like change so fast. Sometimes I get deer in headlight stares at the table. And um, so I'm looking at complete flexibility and control of every piece of software I own. Mm, interesting. Okay. And so that was like the number one thing, right? Like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to connect? How can we provide a seamless process on the backside so the consumer never feels it? And every decision I make is based on scalability and trying to get the problems that we have had behind us and scale them going forward, knowing that it's going to hit again. 
Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that goes back to Steve's point about the, the flexibility there as well. So it sounds like that, that was one of the, the key winners there for you guys. So it's very interesting to, to get both perspectives here and, and hear about kind of this, this journey for, for Palouse as well. So I want to thank you both for joining me today and, and having this discussion really interesting and, and I definitely am enticed to, to try Palouse now and, and see if it gets delivered to me on time. I'll, I'll let you know, Steve. Um, but, uh, if, <laughs> if you people, count on it, <laughs> if people want to find out more about Palouse or, or maybe try your, your products, what's the, what's the best way to do that, Sarah? Palousebrand.com. It's P-A-L-O-U-S-E brand.com. And you'll find our other brand there, Clear Creek Foods as well. And so full line of Mediterranean type foods and wheat berries and stuff that people looking to get healthier are shopping for. All right. Great. And we'll definitely put that up on the website. And, and Steve, how about you? If there's other brands listening out there that want the kind of flexibility that you're giving to Palouse, how, how can they get in touch with where to go? So, yeah. So before I tell you that, if you're, sure. when you're on the Palouse brand website, check out the recipes and check out the split pea soup recipe. Mm. It's a home run. So uh, I highly recommend that. Um, on the where to go side, I think, look, it's just not flexibility, but it's also resiliency. Because one of the things Sarah didn't tell you was that UPS brand hanging on our head from an infosec standpoint and a safety and security, you need what I like to call flexible resiliency. And if you've ever skied, especially what your knees need to be like when you're on moguls, like you need what I like to call you. You need flexibility, but you need a strong core yeah. or else you're, you're, you're going yardstale. Right. Yeah. So, um, um, but yeah, where to go, certainly you can, you can find us at, at where to go.com and it's W A R E the number two go.com. I, I put a plug in for our Instagram and LinkedIn. I think we're a good follow there. We're, mm-hmm. we're just not pumping out promo material. We're, we're pumping out thought leadership. I'd encourage you to take a look at the peak plan and what we're thinking about for the holiday season and what things look like this year and marketplace. So I think we're a pretty good follow there and yeah, we're, we're here to help companies of all sizes compete and grow. And that's what we do. So it was it was great being here and and just great to spend some time with you and Sarah. Sarah's such a great, great, great partner and and the work they do is fantastic. Absolutely. And and definitely appreciate you both coming on and, and spending time with me. And it was great to hear about the the Palouse story and, and how where to go got involved as well. And we'll definitely put all that information about both companies at the new warehouse.com so people can easily find it. So thank you both once again for your time on the show today. You've been listening to the new warehouse podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at the new warehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.